Phase locking is where neurons only fire at preferred phase of the sound wave in each cycle. This is usually at the peak amplitudes. At low frequencies, it's possible for neurons to fire action potentials for every cycle. This makes it easy to determine the frequency of the sound, because it's just the same as the frequency of the neuron's action potentials. At slightly higher frequencies, between 1 kHz and 4 kHz, neurons can't fire for every single cycle, because their firing rate is limited by their refractory periods. For example, here the neurons are only firing at 50% of the cycles. The action potentials will still only occur at the same phase as the sound though, which means that phase locking is still in action. If you have a group of neurons, each responding to different phases of the input signal, it's possible to have a response to every cycle overall. Therefore, you'll have a measure of the frequency. This is called the volley principle. Phase locking occurs with sound waves up to about 4 kHz. Above this point, sound waves travel too fast for the action potentials of individual neurons to accurately represent their timing. This is because of the intrinsic variability in the timing of action potentials. It's about the same as a time interval between successive cycles of sound. This basically means that the neuron just ends up firing at random phases of the sound wave. This means that frequencies about 4 kHz are represented by tonotopy alone. This shows how phase locking is important in pitch perception. But it's important to remember that the intensity of the stimulus is encoded by the number of sensory fibres that are active rather than the frequency of firing. The number of active fibres is linearly related to the amplitude of vibration. Here you can see that the recruitment of more fibres increases the perceived amplitude of the signal.